Blackburn Rovers are through to the third round of the FA Cup where they'll take on championship side Hull at Ewood Park. Next up at Ewood Park, though, that's Charlton Athletic in the league. We'll talk about that and more on today's show. Oh, 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 oh. That's right, folks, back once again with another match preview. But up to this weekend's big encounter against fellow promotion chasers, Charlton Athletic. We'll, ju- we'll talk about that in just a second. But before we get into it, make sure you hit the subscribe button and get back out to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. This month is the month of football. It does get really crazy to the back end of this month where the games really, really do come thick and fast. And if you hit the subscribe button, I'll let you know. I'll let you know all about it. But anyway, before I get to the Charlton game, there's a matter to clear up, and that is the FA Cup match. The FA Cup replay at Gresty Road against Crew Alexandra, and that result is fresh off the press. Blackburn Rovers win 1-0, courtesy of a goal by Danny Graham, around about the 25th minute. Um, that, that, that result puts Blackburn Rovers now up against Hull City, uh, in the third round of the FA Cup, I think it's around about January the 6th, give or take. Uh, the, I think we were supposed to take on uh, AFC Wimbledon at their place. That game already got postponed because Wimbledon are also through in the FA Cup themselves. But we're going to be joining them in the third round. The matchup will give the Rovers fans an opportunity to see just how far they've come since Tony Mowbray's been in charge. And it will put us up against Championship opposition at Ewood Park. In a tie that I feel that we can win. They've also just changed their manager to Nigel Atkinson. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Let's talk about the big one this weekend against Charlton Athletic. The game will be taking place at Eagle Park Saturday, the 16th of December. Last time out, or last season, Charlton Athletic finished 13th in League One. Their top goal scorer is Foco Henry. Uh, he's got seven goals. And the man pulling the strings for, the, for, the, for Charlton is Carl Robinson, who was once linked to the Blackburn Rovers job uh, over the years. I think he had, he had some connections with uh, with some of those uh, Kentaro folks, but I'm not going to talk about that. Last time out, Blackburn Rovers coming out 3-0 winners. That was in the Championship back in September 2015. Before that, also in the Championship, Blackburn Rovers 2-0 winners uh, back in 25th December 2014. Also in the Championship in 2013, Blackburn Rovers losing 1-0. That was the last time Charlton won at Ewood Park. Before that, also in the Championship, uh, Charlton 2-1 victors all the way back January 19th, 2013. And the top of the shop right there, all the way back in 2007, last time they those two sides met in the Premier League, Blackburn 4-1 winners, and that was all the way back 28th of April, 2007. So let's take a look at how Blackburn Rovers will line up. Ryer in goal, Nayimbi, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Craig Conway, Richard Smallwood, Tomlinson, Dak, Antonson, and Samuel. That's my that's my pick, despite Danny Graham scoring in the midweek. I believe Dominic Samuel will get the nod. And I also think Tomlinson will get the nod over Evans and Whittingham, uh, who I, I believe they're both still nursing their injuries. And I don't think they'll make it in time for Saturday's game. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the statistics. Current top goal scorers, we've got three. No, in fact, we've got four guys on eight goals. Charlie Mulgrew, Bradley Dack, Dominic Samuel, and Marcus Antonsen. All eight goals. Man, so who's going to be the first to double digits? I'm going to put my money on Bradley Dack. Right now, he's on fire, but uh, I wouldn't put it past Charlie Mulgrew getting 10 for the season as a centre-back. That is just madness. Moving on to the discipline. Current top of the pops uh, is uh, Richard Smallwood with seven yellows. Elliot Bennett's in there with five. Corey Evans also five. And Derek Williams has got four yellows. Into the reds. Elliot Bennett's top of this one. Doesn't really want to be. Two red cards for him. One for Dominic Samuel. One for Scott Wharton. And one for Raheem Harper. Moving on to the form book. This is the last uh, five games for Blackburn Rovers. And out of those last five, we've won four of them. We only, the only draw was that initial FA Cup match against Crew Alexandra at Ewood Park when we were down to nine men. We were actually 3-0 in front, but we got due diligence and made it through to the next round after beating them 1-0 last time out. In fact, it was only yesterday or today, whenever whenever you get this video, um, we beat them at Crusty Road. 1-0 Danny Graham. We talked about that at the top of the show. Before that, an impressive away victory against Peterborough United. Uh, before that, another away victory against Gary Bowyer's Blackpool 4-2. And then last time we were at Ewood Park in the league, it was a 2-1 victory over Bristol Rovers. So this will, this will be an interesting test for Blackburn as we have been a little bit sloppy at home. We seem to be playing a lot more comfortable away. Uh, so hopefully this can be a turning 
of uh, a page maybe in, in Blackburn's yearbook and maybe we could actually start to play. Uh, we, we, did, we have played some good games at Ewood Park but they're just they're so uh, infrequent and I think and, and Charlton are a decent sized club so they, they've also had recent championship football and recent Premier League football so the, the excitement of playing at Ewood Park might not be as uh, uh, as appetizing to them as it would to the Doncasters or the Warsaws of this world. So I think Blackburn Rovers, if if they if they bring it, which they they have been doing, I think we could could come our way with a comfortable victory, three 0 victory uh, against uh, Carl Robinson's uh, Charlton Athletic. Moving forward, let's take a look at how Charlton Athletic. Will line up this weekend. Uh, Amos in goal, Solly, Consa, Saar, De Silva, Forster, Kaski, Aribo, Marshall, Clark, Holmes, and McGuinness. I think the top goal scorer. I, uh, I've recently read that he will not be starting, uh, or he won't be. He won't be fit and available for the weekend's match against Blackburn. I think his name's Fonsu. Um, uh, he's injured, and I think they're, they're anticipating he will be back in time for the Blackpool game whenever that is. But that's a good bit of news for Blackburn. But we, but we shouldn't uh, uh, underestimate Charlton. They've got goals in them. Holmes can score. McGuinness can score. Clark can also score. And, and there's a whole whole heap of talent in that starting 11. Uh, and they don't, they, they're not sixth in the table for nothing. They're only five points behind us. Uh, and actually, um, you know, they're in, they're in, they're not in the greatest shape. Let's take a look, actually, the form book in just one second. But this is the the, the statistics that matter for Charlton. Fosu is top of the pops. Holmes is there with six. McGinnis has got five. Forster Kasky has also got five goals for the season. As for the discipline, Holmes has got six yellows. Kasky's got five. Forster Kasky's got four yellows. And Solly's got three. As for the Reds, look at that. A clean bill of health. No red cards for Charlton. As for the form book, take a look at this. Last time out, they lost to uh, Portsmouth at the Valley. Uh, before that, they won in the Checker Trade uh, Trophy. I think they're into the knockout stages now. 3-2 winners over Swansea's under-21s. Before that, they lost to AFC Wimbledon in the FA Cup. Uh, in fact, there is uh, the last five, they've yet to pick up a victory. Um, oh, oh, okay, they've, they've won one in five. And that one was in the Checker Trade Cup, so that doesn't really count. Um, so they're, 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 we're looking deep, deep and beyond. Uh, are they due a victory? Is it going to come at Ewood Park? I bloody hope not. Because uh, we could do with another win. Because that can really put the pressure on Shrewsbury and Wigan at the top of the table. Going into the, the real thicker things. Because after this game, uh, the, the matches do come really thick and fast. I think we've got a game on the 23rd, the 26th, the 31st, and then the 1st. So that's like four games in, in a matter of like... Uh, 12 days or something ridiculous so uh, so uh, it's, it's going to be exciting uh, and and it could be uh, the, the turning point in the season for everybody Blackburn Rovers could start to get a grip of this division and, uh, and and start to show the likes of Wigan and Shrewsbury that we are in this for the long haul oh, over the years oh, number oh, players oh, have oh. played Blackburn Rovers and Charlton Athletic here are just three of them in fact, this is actually a defensive bundle today. Uh, Jay McEvery, uh was on Charlton's books way back when. He was also on Blackburn Rovers' books. I think he was the first professional club in his uh, career. Moving forward, Christian Daly, again, once on Blackburn Rovers' books. And he was also on Charlton Athletics' books. Moving onwards, how about this fella? Andy Todd, ex-skipper for Blackburn Rovers. He was also on Charlton's books. Now, like I said, there are many, many players who have played for Charlton Athletic and Blackburn Rovers. I've saved some for the return leg. Down at the Valley, been there myself, went there at the FA Cup a couple of years back. Um, but if you can't wait, head over to my WordPress uh, website. I've got details. The full list is there in all the glory. So you don't even have to wait to the next episode. But you should do anyway because there's always something there that you haven't seen before. Now, uh, I've got a special inclusion in this match preview. Usually we don't get much talking heads, but we do. We've got the, the gaffer talking after the match against Crew Alexandra. And he also mentioned stuff about the Charlton game. So I thought I'd include that right here, right now. So let's waste no more time and jump straight in. Let's listen to what the gaffer has to say about the Crew Alexandra result 
and also the build-up to the Charlton Athletic match. Yeah, I think so. It's a it's a cup match. It's, it's the key is to be in that for the next round, and I um, thought we made it a bit more difficult than we probably needed to. But um, yeah, listen, they worked extremely hard. It was you know you could see they were putting a lot into the game, and they were they carried a threat late on uh, when they went very direct. But um, no, we. we we got the job done, as you say. We uh, win the hat for the next round. Yeah, I think so. I, we said that more clinical, really. I think um, there were some great opportunities that might not have materialised into final shots or end product, but some great. But the final little pass was always overhit slightly, or just missed somebody, or pushed them wide instead of sliding them in for a one-touch finish. Um, but yeah, listen, it was okay. There was lots of good stuff, lots of good work ethic, pressing. Uh, you know, on a terrible night for football in the first. First half, anyway, the weather was um, was something that we had to overcome as well. But um, yeah, okay, there was plenty, plenty of good stuff, and no injuries from what I can see in the dressing room. And we'll two day now um, to recover for, for Charlton at the weekend. Yeah, I think so. I think it was um, affecting the pitch. I think it sort of evens the game up a little bit as well. I think it. Um, but yeah, listen, it, it doesn't matter at all. All it was just important to get this game out of the way. It would have been. You know, burden on us if we have to drag it in the next week or, or another time, trying to squeeze it in between games. That's why we suggested we play tonight after last night's cancellation or postponement, and uh, rather than thinking about next week or other dates, it was important to get it played. I think and get it out of the way. Good, good. I think um, I Travis was good. I thought Hart was good when he came on. I think, um, I think it's, it's, it's important that young players are, have. have Given an opportunity, of course, and yet our our aim and our goal is to win league matches. But um, you have to be able to trust them when you need them, as as we do need Willem at the moment, and um, he's done very very well. He's a very I say focused. He, he he passes economically forward. He he does the job. It says on the tin really, and um, yeah. Well, I've always liked Tomlinson. I just we've gone through Tomlinson's situation. He had. He sort of fell through the cracks with his fitness, I think, when sitting on the bench, never getting on, missing 23 games, didn't do enough work. Um, but he's, as I said, he's played just about every 23 game this season, and he's fit and he looks good. Yeah, well, I don't think I don't think there's anything else to be honest. Um, obviously, we're, we're we're running a bit short on midfield players in wide areas and central areas. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I would have to suggest if Corey's unavailable, and that's not clear yet, I'd have to say. Um, Willem hasn't done himself any harm at all tonight. Yeah, it was quite an amazing strike, wasn't it? I was right behind him, probably usual right behind it. It's just the cleanness of the strike was, uh, was yeah, wow, what a, what a strike it was. But um, as in generally, there was good performances all over the pitch. I thought concentration at the back was was good. And, you know, they they have some physicality that give us some problems, but we dealt with them in the end. And the bit of experience I think was was important. Um, that's why I went with Mulgrew rather than Wharton tonight. Just I thought a bit of experience would was what was required, and they did intercept a lot of balls, nicked a few things in front, dealt with problems, and um, and ultimately defensively we got the job done. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think um, I'm not sure of the programme around it. We have to still focus and concentrate on league games, and um, we'll see what sort of team we we think is appropriate for for that that test really. But um, nothing changes regarding our main priority in, in picking teams to win league matches as opposed to cup matches. Well, listen, I asked him to play in, a, in an unusual position. He got himself booked, and um, I just feel in in games. Like this, um, you know, one bad decision putting a foot in when he shouldn't. We could have been down to ten men again. It's you know sometimes the, the irony of, of these situations can can hit you right in the face really, and it wouldn't surprise you if we ended up another sending off against Crew, and so we just didn't want to take any chances. Um, and I think you know, Travis came on and did exceptionally well. He's um, He's a warrior, you know, I tend to put them in the categories of artists and soldiers and uh, he falls into the soldier category. But, um, but yeah, I thought they all did well tonight. And because of that, we are not going to have a what do the fans say because the, there's not much banter out there. In fact, there's very, very minuscule amount of banter out there. So it's not what I have to say about the match. It's not what the gaff has to say about the match. It's what Cast the Cat thinks will happen at this weekend's matchup between Charlton Athletic and Blackburn Rovers. Let's take a look.
much all I've got for you today, folks. But before I go, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. The games are coming thick and fast. And once I've done this preview, we'll be building up to the review, which will be live on the channel Saturday night into Sunday morning, depending where you are in the world. I also want to give a big shout out to the guys at the BRFCS forum. If you haven't checked out the forum, make sure you do so. It's a great opportunity for you to chat with fellow Rovers fans from around the world, talk about the FA Cup match against Crew Alexandra or the league match against Charlton Athletic. If you haven't checked it out, details are in my description below. I'm also on Twitter, SoundCloud, Facebook and iTunes if you want to check me out on the other social media platforms. This this weekend's match against Charlton will be a massive statement of intent for Blackburn Rovers. If we can pull this off and get three points and maybe results go our way, we could be second in the league. Uh, we cannot catch Wigan Athletic this weekend, but we can close the gap. I'm not sure who they play this weekend. and I'm not really bothered about them right now because I, I know that we need to win this game first and then we'll tackle the, the, the matter of closing that gap. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll get you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now.